In the last few videos, we've been looking at the main ways we have to describe vowels. For example, the height of your tongue, high, mid, low, the frontness and backness of your tongue, the roundness of your lips, and how tense or lax your muscles are when you are producing the vowel. In this video, we're going to be looking at a few more ways in which we can describe vowels. As for example, they could be oral or nasal. Nasal vowels are vowels where some of the air comes out of your nose. If you've studied something like French, you might be familiar with nasal vowels. We're also going to study length. In some languages, changing a vowel from short to long also changes the meaning of the word. Let's start with nasality. So again, if you've studied French, you might be familiar with this. In oral vowels, one, the ones where the air comes out from your mouth, the velum, that's this part in the back of your mouth, is closed. So there's no way for the air to go into your nose. All of the air comes out of your mouth. This is an oral vowel, as all of the ones in this column are. O, mo, o. In a nasal vowel, your velum is open. And so some air can come into your nasal cavity and out from your nose. We call these nasal vowels, as in ton, mon, ont, ton. Let's hear someone with a better French accent say them. La voyelle on. Po. Pon. Mo. Mon. O, honte, trop, tron, so, son, beau, bon. All right, these are oral and these are nasal. And by the way, the International Phonetic Alphabet uh, marks nasal vowels with this little curl here, as you can see has a little uh, tilt. English has nasalized vowels in that if you have a nasal consonant and a vowel next to it, this vowel is gonna have some of its air coming out of your nose too. If you say something like none or no. However, the meaning doesn't change if we pronounce these as oral. Um, for example, if we said no, it would sound strange, but it would still mean the same thing. Or if you turn an oral vowel into a nasal one, like bob, bob, or pet, it would sound strange, but it does not change the meaning of the word. In some languages, like French, changing a vowel from oral to nasal does change the meaning of the word. This language here is called Bribri. It is spoken in Costa Rica. It has about 3,000 speakers. and that's that's what got me into linguistics. I worked at a high school where children spoke Bribri and I learned a little bit of the language. I still work to this day in research on Bribri and on its tones and on computational linguistics for the Bribri language. So you're going to be seeing a few Bribri examples throughout the class. The Bribri has oral and nasal vowels. So this is a house and this is a pot. Ooh, mm. Ooh, ooh. An axe versus thickness. O, 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 o. That one versus over there. E, 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 e. And stone versus cheek. Ak, unk, ak, unk. That's nasality. So again, Turning a vowel from oral to nasal does change the meaning of the word. La voyelle. Ah, there we go. Next, we're going to talk about vowel length. In some languages, when you take a vowel and make it longer, that changes the meaning of the word. This happens in Japanese, for example. The word ojisan is uncle, but ojisan means grandfather. Let me show you. Ojisan. Ojisan. Likewise with aunt and grandmother. Obasan. 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 Biru. Biru. 
So these are short and these are long and the meaning has changed. Um, in, Ma in the Maori language spoken in Aotearoa, New Zealand, you have this difference as well. For example, keke, keke, koko, koko. As you can see, these are short and these are long and the meaning has changed. So vowel length refers to this property where a change in um, how long you take to pronounce the vowel creates a difference in meaning. There we go. Um, by the way, in the International Phonetic Alphabet, we mark the difference between long and short with these two small triangles that look like a colon. I made it super large so you could see that they're not really dots, they're more like little triangles. There's languages, by the way, that have three levels of length, like long, short, long, and super long, for example. If you have that, uh, the Baltic languages are like that, you would have just one triangle versus two triangles, for example. Interestingly, some dialects of English do have a vowel length distinction. In some dialects of English that don't have Rs, we call those non-rhotic, uh, they of course have Rs, but they don't have them in some positions, like in this word. In those uh, dialects of English, vowels, short and long vowels have acquired different meanings. So there is now minimal pairs that are indicated by vowel length. For example, bid, bid, fairy, fairy, bid, bid. Or from someone from New Zealand, for example, cut, 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 cut. So these dialects are called non-rhotic, again, because they don't pronounce these R's at the end of the word. And in those dialects, vowel length has become a way to form minimal pairs. So these two words have the exact same consonants and vowels, except this one is short and this one is long. Cut. Cut. Some dialects of English have that. Cut. Oh, Cut. There we go. In standard American English, there are differences in length. They don't change the meaning, but I want you to take a look at these two words. What is different between those two? Take a moment to think about it. Pause the video. There's beat and bead. Beat, bead. This first vowel is shorter. This one is longer. And the difference is because this one is a voiceless T and this one is a voiced D. So if you have a voiced consonant at the end of the word, it's going to lengthen the vowel a little bit in English. It would sound strange if I said it backwards, if I said this one, beat, 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 bid. <laughs> I'm sorry, beat, bid. If I reversed the length, it would be really strange. In order for them to be pronounced correctly, you need to have this one short and this one long. Beat, bead. So even though it is not distinctive in, in American English, it does not form minimal pairs, there are still length distinctions in American English. There's still a role of, for vowel lengthening. Oh, there we go. So in summary, we look at nasal vowels and at vowel length. In nasal vowels, the air comes out of your nose and in many languages, this can change the meaning of a word, as in French, for example. We looked at vowel length. Length can change, uh, vowels can be short or long. And in some dialects of English, you can use this to distinguish between words like cut versus cut, uh, for what we will pronounce cut versus cart. Uh, in American English, length is not used to distinguish between words, but there is a role for vowel length. Whenever a vowel comes before a voice stop, it becomes slightly longer. So we also need to take length into account when we are describing 